Hello grade 12s. In today's lesson we are going to be revising organic chemistry, that section that probably for some of you haven't looked at since January or February. So it's really important that we go through this. Now remember grade 12s, the thing about organic chemistry is they're always going to ask you the same type of questions. Your first question is always going to be on naming, identifying functional groups, um, uh, join things, maybe a little bit of reactions. Your second question, or maybe your third, the next two, it depends on the examiner, will be on things like intermolecular forces, boiling trends, all of that sort of stuff. And then of course there'll be a question on the reactions. Now the reaction question is very often done as a um, flow diagram. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start straight away because all we're going to do today is questions like we did with the physics. So here we have a question, okay, and what we have here is we have seven, no, seven, apparently I can't count today either. So we have six organic compounds, okay, so there's the organic compound, so this would be like what you'd get in an exam. And then here's the questions. So what I want is I want you to take those six compounds and I want you to write down the letter that represents a compound that has a carbonyl group. Okay, so I want the carbonyl group. I want to know the one that is an alcohol and I want to know the one that is a chain isomer of this compound. Okay, now when you do this, I know it sounds really simple, and you should, but it's not multiple choice. Okay, so please be careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you Two minutes, I know it's only three questions, but I'm going to give you two minutes because I want you to answer these. So here's the six compounds, okay, and in those two minutes I'll go between the two questions so you know. So there's my questions and your two minutes starts now. Okay, so how do you go about answering a question like this? Because I'm pretty sure some of you are going, but two minutes wasn't long enough. Grade 12, two minutes actually for a question like this, if I gave you time at the beginning, is more than long enough, okay? Let me show you how you go about answering a question like this. So we don't look at the question. We look at the um, table, okay? And we go, as soon as we see a table like this in question one, I know it's going to be about naming, functional groups, all of that sort of stuff. So we go through each compound and we make decisions about it, okay? So we go, if we look at compound A, it has a double bond in it, so that makes this an alkene, okay? So I know which functional group it's in. Compound B has a triple bond that makes this an alkyne, okay? 
Um, C has an OH at the end that makes this an alcohol. This is 2,2-dimethylpropane that makes it a hello uh, alkane. Apparently, I've lost the ability to speak today. Let's not tell anyone. Then we look here and we go, oh wait, this has got the special one with the carbon in the middle that makes this an ester. And now this one, F is a little more difficult because we look at it and we go, well, easiest way to decide on this one is actually to draw it out. So we've got CH3, CH, C, and then we have a CH3. So there's a CH, there's a CH. Actually, that's got a double bond in it as well because otherwise the carbons don't have enough. So this is actually an alkene as well. Okay. Maybe we're going to be asked to name it. So if we quickly look at these and we go, well, let's just name them as well. Um, my longest branch, my longest chain here would be this part. Okay. Let's just use this one. So that's one, one, two, three, four. That makes it but. Okay. Butte and one, two, three, one, two. Okay, it's still going to be on two either way. So this needs to go on the smallest one. So that's going to be on two. So this is butte to ene and it would be two methyl. Okay, so two methyl butene. We're happy with that. Then we look here and we go longest chain. Oh, is that? Don't make that. That, that little CH3 at the bottom isn't a branch. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Five is, remember it's meth, eth, prop, but, pent. Oh, it's pent, and we know it's going to be pent something. I know, oh, I'm not leaving myself space. Let's write that a little bit bigger. So that would be pent something, iron. And now we go, if I number from the one on the left, one, two. If I number from here, it's one, two, three. Three is wrong. It's going to be two pent iron. Okay. Now we go to the alcohol and we go, okay, let's look, one, two, three, four, that makes it butte, okay, the alcohol has to go on the first one, it's one of the rules, so this would be butin, okay, one ol, don't forget the N, dimethylpropane, they might ask us to draw it, um, it might come up, so we go, well, dimethylpropane, I'm going to draw it, the top prop is one, two, three, Methyl, dimethyl, 2,2, two, two, so it would look like that. I'm not putting all the hydrogens in. This is just for me. This is an ester. Okay, remember the ester gets broken up over here. The one with the single bond oxygen is from the alcohol. That's first in the name, and it's one, so this is methyl. Okay, one, two, three, so this is methyl propanoate. Okay, okay. Oh. Eight, and then over here, we know this was an alkene. If we name it one, two, three, four, that makes it butte. We're doing well. They're loving the butte on this one. One, two, or one, two. It's going to have to go on two, butte, two, iron. No, ene. Sorry. No, it's, not, it's an alkene. So this is butte, two, iron. Butte, two, ene. Sorry. And the methyl group is on number two. Okay. So we're doing well here, okay? Two, I know you can't really read it, just go with it now. I know I've just spent four minutes, thereabouts, looking at this, okay? But now watch how easy the next part of this becomes because now, write down the letter that represents the, the functional group, well, the, the group, that compound. <sighs> Slowly, there we go. That has a carbonyl group in it. Guys, remember the carbonyl group is from the ester, so it's this one, it's E. The carbonyl group is the double bond oxygen and the O. Okay, very, very important. Write down the one that is an alcohol. Oh, wait, that was C. Write down the one. Which one is a chain isomer of that? So, chain isomer, let's see what this is. CH3, that's CH3, C2CH3. So this is CH2, CH2, CH3. Now, a chain isomer means that 
we need to find something that has four carbons in it with the same number of hydrogens, all single bonds. And I look at these, well, it can't be A, it can't be B, can't be C, can't be E. We look at D, and it can't be F, actually, because F is an alkene as well. Chain isomer means it has to have single bonds. So we look and we go, oh, wait, those are all single bonds. It's D. Done. So much easier than what we did the first time. Okay, so... Not going to give you as much time. So here's the next questions. So I want you to write down the IUPAC name of compound B, the structural formula of F, and the IUPAC name of a positional isomer of compound A. I'm only going to give you, mainly because 1.2.3 is a little harder, I'm giving you two minutes, and your time starts now. Let's get this done. So the first question here was to write down the IUPAC name of B. So if we go back to the one where I wrote all over it, we go, look, oh, look here. I don't even have to think about it. It's right there. Okay. So the IUPAC name of B is pent one iron. I don't even have to think about it because I've already done it. So my question here, that's pent one iron. Okay. Then they want the structural formula of compound F. So if we go back to my nice one that I wrote all over, and we go, fine. Oh, look at this. Look over here. I pretty much did it already. So now we're going to write it out nicely, and we recognize that it was actually 2-methylbutene, okay? So let's write it out nicely so that we've got um, space for it so it looks nice because at the moment... That's just horrendous. So here we go. And the structural formula, remember, was CH3. So there's my CH3. I'll put the hydrogens in a second. CH. Then there was another carbon. Then there was a CH. Oop, hang on. Carbon, yes. And on this carbon, there's a CH3 and another CH3. I should have done them a little bit smaller. So there's my CH3. So there's my CH, CH3. This carbon had that attached to it, and this one had a CH, okay. This was CH, which means the only way this can happen is for me to have a double bond in the middle, and don't forget you have to give me all the bonds and all the hydrogens. Now they want the IUPAC name of, of a positional isomer of compound A. I want to go back to one of the tables where I haven't written all over it, okay. There's... Compound A, a positional isomer means that I have to move the functional group, okay? And I can either move it left or right, doesn't matter. 
at the moment, that functional group sits on the second carbon. I'm going to move it to the first carbon. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm actually going to draw it because it's easier for me if I draw it. So I'm going to go, well, I'm going to move it to the second carbon. And then this carbon had a CH3 on it. My next carbon, then I had another two carbons after that. Okay, so that would all have, that's what it would look like. But they didn't want the formula, they wanted the name. So we look and we go one, two, three, four, that's on the second one. So this becomes two methyl, watch, all one word, but, but, one, in. All righty, so last one. This time I'm not going to give you as much time. Last one, I'm only going to give you a minute to do these ones, and off you go. Okay, grade 12, time's up, and I can just hear the wait. No, Tracy, we're not done. You're going too fast. Actually, you read in an exam, I wouldn't actually expect you to take more than maybe a minute and a half on this one because we've already done all the hard work. A lot of this is theory. So they asked you to which series compound E belongs. Okay, now remember, we did comp when I wrote all over it, this is the part that was important. And what did we say? We said it was an ester. So it's done. The next part is straight revision. Name all formula of the catalyst. Now here you've got a lot of choices. You can tell me that it's either platinum or nickel or palladium. Okay, learn the one that you can remember how to spell. Okay, so platinum is PT, nickel is NI, and palladium, which I actually don't ever spell very often, um, is somewhere, oh no, oh, I'm talking rubbish, I'm talking rubbish, wrong equation, oh, how many of you shouting at the TV going, Tracy, you're an idiot, be nice, oops, it's actually sulfuric acid, I'm just testing, just making sure you know, it's the wrong one, it's sulfuric acid, silly girl, now, oh, the name, now didn't we, when we go back to my original one which I wrote all over, oh look here, look, 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 I wrote it down already, it's methylpropanoate. So let's go back to the question and remember alcohol part, carboxylic acid part. The, what's nice about this particular question oops, is that they didn't ask you, come now, sure. Hmm. They didn't ask you to do anything with um, um, the structural formula equations or anything like that, they just wanted the name. And esters are actually two words. It's the only one that you do do is two words. So it's propen, <sighs> propen, propan, o, eight. Okay, so I think I need a break. So that's where we're going to leave it for now. And then I'm going to see you in a couple of minutes and we'll do another couple of questions. <laughs>